Hello and welcome to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a recap, a review video of the 2020 PJ Championship where Colin Morikawa is the winner. Our first major of the year is over with and a bright young star won. I mean, this guy has it all. He is one of the most consistent golfers uh, that we've had this year. And we kind of already knew that coming into this, this whole season looking at him from last year like he is just tremendous can't give enough praise to colin morikawa how he played the entire time it was just precision it was surgical out there um but yeah let's just get into this let's get into the recap let me get the spreadsheet up for you guys i don't really need to talk anymore um i have the results page up right now we see colin morikawa paul casey dustin johnson matthew wolf uh, Jason Day, Bryson DeChambeau, Tony Finau, Scotty Scheffler, all inside the top five. Yes, that is right. That That is, they're all considered in the top five. It was kind of jammed at the top there at 10 under for a long time until Morikawa made an eagle on hole 16. A, a fantastic drive that we'll continuously see throughout the years. Like that, that drive was amazing. Uh, and it really won him the tournament. I mean, the momentum... Going down the stretch, he really had nothing to worry about. No one was catching him. No one was making a move. No one could make putts. I mean, it was, it was crazy. So awesome that uh, Morikawa won. Uh, I did own him in a fair amount of of lineups, but he wasn't my number one guy by any means. So I'll just straight up admit that right now. I can't I can't say hey my process would have gotten you on Colin Morikawa, but. It could have. I mean, it could have helped you for sure. It, it just, depending on who you liked more, really. To me, it was between Morikawa and JT, and we'll get into that. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like on the spreadsheet. Um, but I kind of want to do this. Like in my lineup construction videos, my preview videos, I'm, I kind of go a little here and there. I want to keep this pretty structured, so I'm going to try to stay that way. Um, we're going to go right away and look at the optimal lineup versus the... Um, uh, the tournament, the GPP that I played in that obviously had the most, the highest entry fee, basically, is what I'm getting at. So let me go ahead and pull that up right now. So what you're looking at is the 2020 recent form page. And on this page, um, I hold basically, I mean, it first of all, holds recent form. But I also hold the optimal lineup and then the winning lineup of the the highest dollar entry fee GPP that I'm playing in for that week. This week was the $3 birdie. Thought about playing in the Millie Maker, but man, I just been I've been bleeding too much money in the Millie Maker, so I decided to kind of hold back from doing that this week. Entered just one lineup in the $3. Um I had two guys miss the cut, so I didn't cash anything on the $3. Uh overall, I was uh made half my money back, so it was just a uh, I mean I didn't I didn't make my money back. Is all I'm trying to get at. Uh, only made half of it, so un it was disappointing. Um, could be the uh, the entries that I'm I'm entering, uh, or that the contests I'm entering, or whatever. But I'll I'll review that uh, not in this video, but on my own, and and see where I can you know do better, basically. But anyways, optimal lineup versus the three dollar birdie. Uh, golfers with a little tick mark up here. This little black tick mark, that's an optimal lineup. Golfers that are highlighted blue are in the $3 winning lineup. Um, so the $3 winning lineup, we had Colin Morikawa, Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Scotty Scheffler, Tony Finau, and in 43rd place, Ryan Palmer. Ryan Palmer was a top 20 scorer. If I go ahead and I sort this, he was the 17th ranked golfer in DK points for this week. So 43rd place, and, and it's already sorted by DraftKings points. So as you can see, this light green color indicates a top 20 finish. We have a 22nd finish. We actually have two 22nd finishes, a 33rd, and then a 43rd, all making it inside the top 20. So for those that are wondering, you know, you know, finishing position versus DK points, I mean, to me, it's still and will always favor... Uh, finishing position over DK points, but obviously we're trying to win and we have to look at DK points um, 
it's just all those placement points are huge and typically if you're high up there in placements more than likely you're scoring pretty decently too so anyways uh the so that was the three dollar now the optimal lineup was colin morikawa dustin johnson paul casey matthew wolf scotty scheffler and jason day the three dollar birdie winning lineup used fifty thousand dollars exactly so no money left on the table this is just marks another week that this happens uh optimal lineup we would leave uh seventeen hundred dollars on the table forty eight thousand three hundred that's all i'm going to talk about uh on this page and for the optimal versus the recent form i'm going to go into the 2020 dk page and right away what i want to cover um i want to get right into the bucket system let's talk about that right away and then i'll talk about stats afterwards so what i did this week was i rated basically i went by the last year bucket um uh, let me go like this so we went with by last year bucket we actually did the combination last year bucket last week bucket uh and tried to figure out the best golfers to choose from so as you can see my model wanted a lot of hideki matsuyama followed by xander and dustin now dustin was you know nine thousand a very optimal price to play xander was a little expensive if he wasn't going to get a top three finish i wouldn't have wanted to play any any xander i can tell you right now i pretty i stayed pretty true to these numbers in fact if i were to show you um and go by ownership here are my top guys in ownership and i'm just gonna grab this scroll over here and just go with this so i played in 102 tournaments uh contests of those 102 i owned hideki in 38 but then it followed xander rory and dj so i i'm just showing you this because i followed the the sweet spot number pretty close i mean it it, it was i stayed pretty true to this i wanted to test it out and see how well i would do so of all the ones actually i shouldn't have done that basically I would look at these numbers, and if I liked the golfer, I would play him in that, that many. I didn't do that with all of them. And I, I know what I just recently said, you'd have been like, well, duh. But what I'm trying to get at is I didn't play all of them. I didn't play all of them that way. Um, a lot of them, if I didn't like, I'm, I would have played in one lineup, and it would have been like a winner take all. Just because I, I'm, if I'm going to hedge myself, you know, I, I'd want to do it that way. Um, but anyways i use this number uh, or this number is every golfer in this last year bucket one so if i went like this and and look to see what the numbers produced we had two golfers that were last year ones that finished inside the top 10. now if i look at all the ownership percentages like i had 21 on rory 33 on hideki now those didn't really net me anything you know like really good unless I paired them up with a Colin Morikawa. Like obviously you need your winner. But like DJ, that was pretty big. So my top numbers actually hit pretty decently um, when it came to like going by the number. So as I scroll down to last year twos, um, right here, this was pretty big, 13 and 11. Now out of the twos, I didn't play that many. Uh, and if I were to scroll all the way down to the end of the twos, you know of the zeros you know i really i didn't miss on anybody polter maybe of the ones kisner sure like kisner would have hit but what i'm trying to get at what i'm looking at here is did i miss on any of these low owned guys who made like a top 10 and like siwoo playing him in two lineups totally fine by me um i didn't miss he wasn't in an optimal lineup i didn't feel any regret in not playing him um and really your high price guy was bryson in this but because of his price it would have been difficult to play him in a lot of lineups and you know same with john rom 10 5 being in 13th place you wouldn't have wanted to play him so you wouldn't have wanted to play any last year twos um uh ryan palmer ended up being a golfer well actually there were two last year twos that ended up being in the winning lineup for the three dollar contest but 
other than that, like it was not an optimal, you know, showing for them. Um, going to my lineup construction, you know, I did play Bryson and John Rom pretty similar. Like I played them maybe in a couple more lineups, but just because they fit. Um, but yeah, I pretty pretty much stuck to these numbers, which was decent. Uh, you can see how much Colin Morikawa I played. I wish I would have played a little more. I mean, everyone I, like he was owned in 27 percent of lineups it was pretty insane so if you weren't playing Colin Murakawa you weren't winning um going back to this so I I was pretty good with the twos now going down to the threes um you do see Colin Murakawa now my top two guys were JT and Colin if you were to look at this bucket and go you know what I only want to play one of these guys I if I would have done that if I would have taken that stance I would have went Probably with Morikawa, in all honesty. And I really liked Scheffler. Like, if we come back to this. Um, I played Scheffler in six lineups as opposed to the three that the, the models uh, spit out. But I, I put him in my top lineups. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you what my top lineups were. So I sort this. Um... can't remember if this was actually like these would have been my high priced guys or high price i think this was my yeah this was my lineup that was in the three dollar uh birdie but man i had um scheffler in one of my really good lineups uh that made me a, a, most of my money back but I, i'm not gonna find it there uh but anyways going back down to the threes you know if i were to say okay jt's too much I'm going to stick with the ones because the ones are big and I really like DJ. I really like Xander or I really like Rory. You know, I could pair two of these guys up together and then I wouldn't have enough money for someone like a, a JT. So what I would do with JT is just stick him in one lineup. Unfortunately, that's not what I did. I really like JT. I, I just, I was, I was non-committal on going all in on one of these golfers. I think going forward, I kind of want to do that just so I can maximize my profits because um, I've just been slowly bleeding money over the last couple weeks. Um, actually, probably the last month, honestly. But we really could have easily gotten there. Like, Morikawa at 86, you could have start, you could have started your, a lot of your lineups that way or start with DJ, who was a 1-1. One, one. Um, look at the twos. You didn't like the twos. Come down to the threes and go with like a Colin Morikawa. Um, easily could have done that. Or you could have went with DJ Bryson and then Morikawa. Obviously, that's what the $3 winning lineup did. Um, but yeah, if we looked at like the 2019 DK page, you know, like we saw 131 inside the top five. Uh, inside the top 10, I'm sorry. But we also saw another three inside the top 10 as well. So we could, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the same premise that I used or the same strategies. I, I found three that I liked. And I played, you know, decent amount of Scheffler. I played a decent amount of Redman and Henley. These were golfers that I really liked. I didn't really play a lot of Brendan Todd, but I think he's a golfer we just can't ignore anymore. Um, if he's going to stay in the 7K range, solid play, honestly. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about these guys, but yeah, looking at three ones, like the, the model... Pretty, did pretty decent, spitting out 13 lineups for uh, Colin Morikawa out of 100. I, I think that's pretty decent. Um, and again, we could have easily went one over, over the other. Like, we could have chose one of them. Or out of, you know, the, the top guys here or whatever, just choose two and then play the rest of them in single lineups elsewhere. You know, could have done something like that. And we could have really allocated any of this other ownership to any of these guys if we wanted to. This is just strategies going forward. Coming down to the fours, um, I really liked the fours. Um, if I go back to 2019, like DJ was a four, Patrick Cantley was a four, so it was a lot of your top guys. And when I looked at the fours for this year, Webb was definitely one of the top guys that I liked, followed by Jason Day, which gave a really good result. Um, I played a lot of Day and Simpson, um, I didn't really play a lot of fours together, so it was just one or the other. Obviously, Casey came out, you know, only five. And part of that is because... 
I only played them in five. Part of that is, let me double check on this. Um, he only had three top twenty stats. His last week bucket was a five, which is not a good. It's not a good number to have. Um, and I think that's primarily why I didn't play a lot of him. Um, I did play him in five lineups. I also don't like Paul Casey. Uh, every time I roster him, I've just had the worst luck. And when I think about a golfer who could win a tournament, Paul Casey just doesn't come to mind. Now, at his price, 7500 that's not bad. You know, if you wanted a filler and, you know, we were looking at these fours, um, we had a total of 92 positions we were going to use for last year fours. Out of the 92, you know, I, I just don't, I'm not comfortable playing a lot of Paul Casey. But... Jason Day was great. Harold Varner was looking good for a long time. So was Emiliano Grillo. Uh, but obviously Justin Rose was there. I think if you go back to the um if you go back to the lineup construction video, I had said basically Day, Justin Rose, and Ricky. These guys are I was gonna play interchangeably. In all reality, I probably should have included Paul Casey. Um But I was cool not playing Paul Casey honestly I I still am cool not playing Paul Casey even to this even till right now like I know he was in the optimal lineup but I I just can't do it he's one of those golfers that will always be forever b burned in my brain of just poor finishes uh like poor like you can't trust him that's what I'm getting at I can't trust Paul Casey so I, I just can't play him that much how Tong Lee he was in one of my good lineups with Scheffler uh, I mean, I had Murakawa, DJ, Scheffler, Houtong, Rory, and uh, Harold Varno III. So it's like I had all all of those golfers, and it was pretty darn good. It just it obviously didn't uh, play play out the way I wanted it to. Uh, Rory kind of stunk it up, but if Rory would have done better, like that that lineup, man, would have made me a lot of money. Um, coming down to the fives, as you can see, not a lot of fives finish inside the top 10. Sure, uh, Cameron Champ did. Now, fives don't mean they can't finish inside the top 10. It's just highly unlikely. Like, we're not going to see a lot of fives. And thusly, this proves a point. We're not going to see a lot of fives. Sixes was a little different. Um, D Daniel Berger, Tony Finau, and Joel Damon all were on the, like inside the top 10, inside the top five. For the longest period of time when i was looking at a lot of this i'm like man this is gonna screw me you know i i didn't play a lot of sixes of the sixes that i did play i mean i played burger and connor's quite a bit and i think a lot of it became was because of the top 20 stats um and i want to say like tournament history perhaps i didn't really get on a lot of tony finau but i'm also not I, i'm okay with fading tony um he wasn't in the optimal lineup, but he was in the $3 winning GPP lineup. I'm, I'm okay with it. So, yeah, no regrets. But the bucket system in general did pretty decent. Um, we had our 1-1, like we said. I mean, this is going to add another 1-1 to the amount of times that 1-1s have been inside the top 10 and top 5. I think if we come down here... We look at the top five bucket combination one one has been in 29 percent of of well has been inside the top five in 29 percent jeez how am i gonna line how in the last six years a one one has been in the top five 29 percent of the time um of all top five finishes let me let me just double check so one two three four five so it's been inside the top five every single year. Um, but of the top five finishing positions or finishing bucket, bucket combinations, a 1-1 one -one has been. Wow, why am I having a hard time saying that? Man. Of all the top five finishes within the last six years, a 1-1 one -one has been inside the top five, 29%. Ah, that still doesn't work. Yeah, I, I suppose of the bucket combinations over the last six years, a one one has been in the top five. 
29% of those bucket combinations have been a 1-1. One, one. There we go. That's how we need to say it. Ugh, gross. But 100% of the time, it's been inside the top 5. 100% of the time, it's been inside the top 10. So, like, we see a 1-1 one, one a lot. And I'll update this number. Um, this, is, this is prior to the, the conclusion of this tournament. Um, but this is going to go up to 11. And obviously this number, actually this number is probably going to go down because we only saw one instance of a 1-1 one, one being inside the top 10. Up oh, two, but one, one inside the top five. So again, this is, these are my bucket combinations that I go by. 3-1 uh, is going to uh, move up as well. I don't know if we saw 3-1 quite a bit. Maybe not. 2 1, 4 1, 5 1, 6 1, all of those before 3 1, huh? I mean, 3 1 here inside the top 10. So it should be up here, right? Why? Okay. I haven't seen any inside the top 5. Interesting. Now we do. Uh, but last year, if we look at last year, obviously Sung Kang was 7th place. So we, we, we did see a 3 1 inside the top 10. Um, but yeah, 3 1 1. One one. I mean, I, I usually go by the last year buckets here, seeing a one a couple times, uh, just one two. Now we have a couple. We have a few more threes, um, and really look at who the golfers are. They're all rookies, like really good rookies. We don't see really any like veterans. Um, Lantos not so much of a veteran, but. We don't see a lot of the veterans up here. It's just the, the raw talent golfers. Uh, and really, if you look at all these golfers, they're very good within that raw talent category. So um, anyways, that's going to be a wrap on the bucket system. I'm not going to talk any more about it. Uh, if you guys have questions about it, please leave them in the comments. I will happily uh, answer them or email me, one of the two. We're not going to talk about any of this. Let's go ahead and talk about tee times, though. So this red number, I'm going to hide this, too. This red number indicated a golfer that I liked, but not a tee time pairing that I did. And if you look at all of the uh, golfers here, uh, Xander didn't really end up because uh, Daniel Berger is right here. But if we look at the guys that I did highlight, 12, 2, and 8. Those are the games they played. Those are their tee times. Uh, it's dependent on their tee time. You don't see any of the rest inside the top 20. And that's what, obviously, from here down, I mean, this whole page that you see right now are top 20 golfers. We don't see any of the other guys there. Now, there are some other ones that I liked, like, say, DJ and Justin Rose. Like, we could have put those guys together. Um, I don't know... Maybe we get rid of Matthew Wolf of the optimal lineup and just go with like the golfers. So this would have included the two together. Um, I mean, I could play anyone. Let's just let's just say we played Paul Casey for whatever reason. You know, added on to this. How about this? We'll go with Matthew Wolf. Not a big deal. Um, so forty-eight thousand six hundred. Let me open up. Let's see what their points would have been. So we went here, 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 and 16, right? So 574, that would not have won the $3 contest, I don't think, right? 584.5, Five, doing this would have got us 574. So we would not have won. Um, you would not have wanted to play Xander. What was I... Let's see, 16 with 16, sure. I mean, I, we take Xander out and just put then Bryce in. That works, right? 594. Oh, you can do it that way. Why did I think we could? Anyways, just looking at tea times alone, um, you know, we see 16, 16. Those are together. I believe 42 is down here. Adam Scott and Bryson. Um, 46 is even down here. Ian Poulter and Paul Casey. So I like that group. I just didn't play them a lot. Oh, well. Not too concerned about it. 
Um, otherwise, other than that, uh, tea time pairings didn't really play a huge factor. In fact, the guys that I liked that weren't in good tea times did well. Uh, it did not matter who they were playing with. Um, just trying to see if I can find anything else anymore. Okay. So, tea time pairings. Sorry for that little kind of worthless bit of piece of information. Didn't so much matter for this week. Actually, let me go back. I'm going to double down on this. I just want to double check. 16 and 16. So, we go here, here. Here. I'm trying to make like a realistic lineup. So I'd have like 7,500 left. 48,800. Is that? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I make lineups like this all the time. We're leaving 1,200 on the table. So 38 wasn't really involved. 8 wasn't really involved. 46 was with someone down here, right? Uh, Ian Poulter. What if I were to put those guys together? Who do I take out? We take out Matthew Walsh, who scored 96 and a half. Okay, so we're gonna go here, 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 and then come down to 46 and add that. 576.50. So we still went to one three dollar lineup if we went with if we would have went with that. Um, I just wanted to see how many like pairings we could do to see how successful it would have been. Um, to see if if pairings would have really mattered. And in in fact, they really didn't. So wouldn't have wanted to go that route. Um Okay, so let's hide all of this. I'm not going to look at odds. Obviously, you can see Colin Markawa won with 33 to 1 odds. I think some people even have 40 to 1 odds. Um, you can look at the points per game value. I'm going to hide all of that. And now what we're going to do is just go from left to right. We'll talk about basically all of the stats that were included in the top 20 stats. So first off, when we look at tournament history, and I'm just going to leave it on the top, on the top 20. I'm not gonna move it. Uh, and we're probably most likely gonna talk about top 10 finishes. So when we look at top 10 finishes, um, we see three golfers inside the top 20 for tournament history, which is basically course history, uh, if we wanna look at that. And then we have two golfers that have pretty decent, you know, in inside the field. So Xander and Paul Casey, both in the 40s, that would be your 20 to 40 rank with this light green number. Um, I don't see, okay, so the yellows would be Champ, uh, Cam Champ and Tony Finau. So basically having good tournament history was a plus. It was a benefit. Um, the winner and a couple fourth place finishes, the young guys had no tournament history. So maybe when we think about next year, if we're looking at golfers who um, have a lot of talent, who have not played in the PGA Championship, maybe we, maybe we consider those golfers. We'll see. Uh, if we look at recent form coming into this, so again, just looking at the top 10, recent form played a huge factor. Paul Casey is really the only outlier here. 67.25 was his averaging finishing position over the last seven weeks. That was not good. Uh, he also had a 67th place finish the week before, which is also not good, and that's why he was a last week bucket five. Obviously, something clicked. He was able to get his game around. That stuff happens all the time. Although I'm trying to predict success with the bucket system, we're going to see things like this every once in a while. He is, well, him and Tony Finau, they are the only fives, really, that are relative worth speaking. Otherwise, everyone, it's littered with ones, some twos, some threes, but mostly last week ones. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six golfers inside the top 10 had last week ones. Now, I don't think I would have really played, say, Joel Damon in any of my lineups, but if I were to try to create a lineup of all these last week ones, could I have done it? No, nah, I'd have been $200 over. So, um, suppose I could have maybe pivoted from say Xander to Daniel Berger but I would never have played two sixes together so that just won't that wouldn't happen anyways um but going back to recent form it looked like it mattered quite a bit in fact you could have made any lineup with you know these got these golfers that have good recent form coming into this 
you know, 26,500 for these golfers right here, you could pair them up with anyone. If we went to like down the next line, um, if I'm really making a lineup. I'm not, I, I'm looking at all the, all of the intangibles. So here you could go with someone in the 6K range or 7-2. I'm probably not playing Joel Damon, no matter how much that I'm looking at this. I don't like last year's sixes, so I, I just wouldn't. And how Tong, I mean, the last week five, I wouldn't have done that either. I probably would have played someone like Kevin Kisner, in all honesty. So it, it's really difficult to go down that line. I don't ever look at, oh, I need to make six golfers, or I need to make a lineup with six golfers with good reason for them. So I guess it's kind of pointless to talk about it. I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, reason for him looked like it kind of mattered uh, when creating lineups. We really, other than Paul Casey, don't see anyone 60 and above. So, something to look at for next next time we play a PGA Championship. Uh, let's go ahead and hide this and look at our bent grass stats. Here's an issue. Um, as we were leading into this tournament, basically everyone was saying this was bent grass greens. Um, there were a few stories that were leaking out saying that, hey, the locals are telling us that POA over the last couple of years have crept in to the greens and there were there were, there is POA on the greens. When we looked at the greens, if you paid attention, those little light colored spots that looked very patchy, that was POA Anna. And there was a lot of it. And that's going to be common with any golf course that has POA near it or on it. POA is an invasive grass. It will end up being the primary grass at some point in time. So when I look at bent grass, sure, overall bent grass golfers here look to have the advantage. Um, I mean, like this is just remarkable seeing all this up here. So perhaps it had a little bit more bent grass than we then than I would have thought afterwards, but I think we would have had to have included POA as well. Uh, but seeing a lot of these golfers here, like no one other than Cam Champ has terrible, well, Siwoo Kim as well. Other than those two golfers, everyone had pretty good overall bent grass stats. And most of them had been in the top 10 quite a bit on bent grass golf courses. Uh, DJ had a pretty terrible 2020 uh, bent grass. um campaign but I'm, I'm wondering if this is true what is the travelers it's bent in poa so i would have included that as poa uh, obviously dj won the travelers that's why i was looking at it uh, but poa now that i think of that also kevin streelman had called those greens bent grass greens um he loves bent grass golf courses so this is probably really close to the Travelers Championship with greens, how the greens did. And it would be interesting to see the correlation between the two. Actually, we can do that really quick. Uh, if we go back to the Travelers, second place, fourth place, couple tenths. Not really. Um, I would only look at like the top 10 finishes or whatever. Like this, I guess this is what I would look at. Kevin Knopf, Miss Cut. Streelman, Mackenzie Hughes, whatever. So not a very good comp course. Uh, and I don't really believe in comp courses. So I just wanted to see what the Travelers would have looked like. But obviously the only corollary is DJ. Uh, but anyways, looking at the top 10 here. Bentgrass just almost through and through just played a huge factor. Cam Champ, obviously 10th place finish. He could he could easily have been inside the top three, could have been in you know second place, but you know he still finished tenth. You know was not in the optimal lineup, was not even in the three dollar winning lineup. I'm not gonna even include him in really reviewing these stats, but he was the worst bent grass golfer that we had. Everyone else had really good bent grass stats. Okay, so that was the grass stats uh, for the top twenty or top ten finishers. Now, when we look at the rest of the stats, uh, I'm, all I'm going to do is just count all the dark greens. So we have one, two, three, four, four golfers 
who had top 20 T to green stats. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Eight golfers that had top 40 stats in T to green. Um, really, only Matthew Wolf had terrible T to green stats for some reason. Interesting. Must have been, I don't know what it was. T to green, so around the green obviously is his downfall. Um, off the tee, we look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight golfers inside the top 20 for T to green or uh, off the tee. Sorry, um, what, was, what number did I say that was? Eight, so eight, nine, ten golfers inside the top 40 for off the tee. It's a, that's a huge number. Approach one, two. So maybe not so much approach mattered. Um, we could also look at these numbers and say, okay, how many were above zero? It, you know, quote unquote positive strokes gain t uh, approach. Sure, we had ten, but when it when we compare it to the rest of the field, only two were in the top twenty. Three, four, five were in inside the top forty. Not a stat easily to use. Around the green, as you can see, not a good stat to go by either. Putting, also not a good stat. Um, when your top three golfers had, had negative stats coming into this for strokes game putting, hard to say, hey, let's look at putting. But no one really does anyways, so therefore we really don't have, we're not looking at putting. Maybe, maybe like long-term putting stats, that would probably work, but other than that, not so much. I went to went with it. Green and reg, um, four golfers inside the top 20, five, six, seven golfers inside the top 40. Proximity, oh shoot, I forgot, we're not sorting that. Uh, only two golfers inside the top 20 of proximity, for this field that is. Uh, that goes with all the stats I was talking about. Two, three, four, five inside the top 40. Oh, I'm sorry. We had three inside the top. We had three inside the top 20. Six total inside the top 40. Birdie or better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven golfers inside the top 20. Eight golfers inside the top 40. So... Birdie or better was a stat to look for at during this week. Quickly go through driving distance. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven golfers inside the top twenty for driving distance. Um, I should say I should say it differently. Seven of the top ten golfers, or seven of the golfers inside the top ten on the leaderboard, were inside the top twenty for driving distance. Um, which is pretty remarkable. I thought maybe good drive percentage would matter this week. It doesn't look like it really mattered that much, nor did bogey avoidance. This was kind of driving distance and birdie or better, basically. I went, we scrolled back. Um, shouldn't have got rid of all of these that quickly. But if we look, um, birdie or better, I'm going to pair with driving distance. Look at how many we see inside the top 10. Yeah, that was pretty telling. Crazy. I mean, and then your winner, birdie or better, driving accuracy, good drive percentage. Just off the chart. Really can't see anything else with anybody, you know, can't really tell with these stats why Paul Casey would have been up there, uh, why Matthew Wolf would have been up there. I guess his drive distance was pretty darn good. Um, but yeah, birdie or better, or even bogey avoidance, you know, not the greatest. So anyways, talking about just stats in general, it looked like really off the tee, driving distance, and birdie or better were very huge key stats at TPC Harding Park. Um, I don't know if anyone was really going by that, but that is something to look forward to in the future. I will definitely use that in my weighting model when it comes to the bucket system and the top 20 stats, um, and go from there. 
Okay, so I don't know if there's really anything else to talk about. I kind of went through the bucket system, went through the swing stats, the grass stats. Um, kind of the recap. Yeah, so Colin Morikawa. I mean, a lot of people played him. 27.82% in the $3 birdie. Um, a lot of people kind of knew. I mean, that $8,600 price range was a good one just to kind of, you know, you could have went from anyone up here and dropped to 86 really easy. Um, and you could have made a really good lineup based off of that. Obviously, if you want to went with the winning guy started with Bryson, went to DJ, then to Morikawa. Like you're sitting with, you're sitting at twenty seven thousand nine hundred dollars uh, that you've used. So you have twenty two thousand one hundred to, you know, to spend. That's over seven k. Like that's insane to have that much value to think about. Um, as I go down here, that's thirty five eight, and obviously Scheffler was a great play. Um, we would have had sixty nine hundred dollars left over, and obviously the guy used uh, Ryan Palmer. I probably would have like I liked Palmer. I liked Redmond. Um, going down even underneath that, I liked EVR at sixty seven somewhere. Where are you, EVR? I mean, I did like Matthias Schwab, but he missed the cut. Um. I liked Harold Varner. I liked Russell Henley. Where's the EVR? Why can't I see him? He's 68, isn't he? 68, 68. Eric Van Ruyen, where are you? I am so confused. Do I have any filters on right now? I'm sure some of you guys are just yelling at me right now like what the hell or was that his price last week okay 7100 I'm sorry yeah his, his price last week must have been 68 that's why it's stuck in my head um yeah I like those guys uh I would not have played Siwoo Kim I wouldn't really play anyone else yeah, it would have just been the ones I showed you I'm not gonna lie and tell you I would have played you know Siwoo Kim or Joel Damon or whatever. But anyways, yeah, it was, um, I kind of wish I'd have went with something like that because that was, that's a sexy lineup. I mean, I guess we could have easily gone to, yeah, anyways, I'm not going to talk any more about this. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for the support. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in a preview video for the Wyndham Championship either tonight or tomorrow. All right, see ya.